Good morning. I'm Celeste King IV, Vice Chairman of the Congress of Racial Equality of California, and I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. We're here uh, in regard to an issue that is of grave concern to us. Um, it happens to be that uh, we've become informed that there is a banking institution in Los Angeles, California, that seems to have um, engaged in predatory lending practices that have resulted in uh, foreclosures, imminent foreclosures, and actual sales of church properties across uh, Los Angeles and other areas of minority churches. This institution is Broadway Federal Bank. We further have information that the bank is doing this in violation of the law, meaning that the Office of Thrift Supervision has issued a cease and desist order, and it is our understanding that Broadway Federal Bank has agreed to that order and did so back in 2010. Since that period of time, they have continued to operate and continue to move forward when they were told that they were not supposed to and they agreed to. Not only that, their service corporation, which is the, uh, the, in the arm that institutes foreclosures or assignments of the um, information to a third party, was issued a suspension order by the state of California through the Secretary of State's office, which means they were uh, suspended from doing anything in regard to, and it specifically states, uh, moving forward with actions that had to do with foreclosures and other proceedings in regard to churches specifically. Now, they have continued to do so, and in the current situation, we are aware of 59 churches that are being subject to these illegal actions. 59 churches that are being victimized by a predatory institution. That being said, I would uh, like to step aside and let uh, the pastor of one of the, um, uh, one of the churches that's involved in this, Pastor Harden, and let him have the mic. Thank you. Uh, good, <clears throat> good morning. Uh, I'm Pastor Darren Harden. I'm the pastor of the Great Open Door Church of God in Christ here in the city of Long Beach. And I'm here today uh, because I know that we have been victimized by Broadway Federal. For um, six years, we was current with our payments, never missed. And I went to Broadway Federal and asked for a modification due to the, re the effect of the, of the recession. And Broadway Federal said it could not do that simply because we was on, our payments was all current and we had never been late. Uh, a few months later, uh, a domino effect hit us as did the uh, whole society, and we was late. And three months, uh, almost three months, it went by, so I went back for, asked again for a modification. I was told then I could not get a modification until I bring everything up current. So I was caught, caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, this, now we are in foreclosure. Uh, this is the domino effect. It is affecting our congregation. It is affecting our community, uh, the minority community which we serve. And I'm not alone on, in this. There's a many pastors that are being victimized and we are hurting. And we want you to know that Broadway Federal have, we feel that Broadway Federal have used predatory lending to put us to where we are now and they have been ordered, as you heard before, from uh, Celeste King. They have been ordered to desist and also not to do things that we didn't know about. But we are here today just to open up the eyes of the community to these lending institutions that are attacking mostly minority community and it is an effect on us, our people, our congregation, and our society. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Harden. I'd now like to uh, bring forth uh, Bishop Watt. Thank you, I'm Bishop Raymond Watts. I'm the pastor of New Direction Community Church. We're on the far end of the county, the city of Pomona. Uh, we also feel as though we've been victimized by predatory lending. 
uh, with F Broadway Federal Bank. Our community is devastated. Naturally, our church congregation is devastated. We've been in this city uh, for 46 years as a church. I myself have been pastoring for uh, 32 years. Uh, and when we started out with this bank, we were, we were doing uh, just fine in our building construction project. Uh, it's kind of interesting, the, uh, the bank and as well as uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the contractors and all that are involved uh, saw fit to, uh, with a shortfall to put a second trustee on our, our facility. And when the uh, interest, uh, actually when the recession hit, things were not going as well as they should. We went to the bank to ask for a modification of relief from a very high interest second trustee. Uh, at that point, they would not do it. Uh, we, we, f we fell behind just a little and, uh, uh, and they, they would not refinance that second trustee and uh, therefore put us into a situation where we were being foreclosed upon. And this was in uh, late 2010, I mean, sorry, 2011. And uh, we've not been able to resolve these issues since then. And uh, we feel as though we could, but, uh, w uh, and, and we, we were certainly willing to make payments and pay for our facility, but uh, the bank will not cooperate with us. And so we were in this situation, and I, I feel as though uh, at, in times like these, especially in recession, uh, there ought to be some type of uh, uh, compromise that can be made so that uh, churches in a minority community, especially long-standing institutional churches uh, will have an opportunity to uh, keep their facilities and move forward and continue to service their community. Thank you, Pastor Watts. Yeah, but one of the things that um, is, is really apparent here is, is that the churches that are being subject to the, these foreclosure proceedings or being threatened with foreclosure proceedings or having been sold that have taken place after the cease and desist order of 2010 is really uncognizable. Um, we're dealing with a situation here where we look, when we look at churches as a whole, we're looking at probably the cornerstone of our communities. That being said, the loss of one church is, is, is huge in the community context. The loss of 59 churches? I mean, that's unimaginable. You know, what we have when we look at this situation as a whole is indicative of everything for profit and nothing for community. We have a lending institution here who actually, in many cases, reached out starting years ago to a minority community that was unable to obtain financing and began setting up financing programs, which was really commendable. However, over the years, they have progressed to the point where what was commendable is no longer commendable. I, I really find myself kind of at a loss for words here, and I'm not usually at a loss for words, folks, but I, I just have so much difficulty with this because this strikes at the heart of our community, and it really says to me that this institution may well, in fact, be part of a much bigger program, and we are unaware of it, and we're just now beginning to see the, the edges of it as it begins to unfold. And I think we need to take a real, a real hard look at the lending practices across the board in regard to our religious institutions. That being said, I'd like to invite uh, one of the attorneys up to the, to the podium who uh, represents some of the churches. Uh, would you uh, care to introduce yourself? Or? Uh, good morning, my name is Greta Curtis. I'm a local attorney here in uh, California. I presently represent Greater Open Door um, in reference to the issues that they have encountered with Broadway Federal, say, um, Broadway Federal Bank. Um, at the present time, myself and my partner, Ali Monago, are um, basically working towards um, assisting the uh, 59 churches that we've become aware of that are suffering from uh, potential foreclosures, receiverships, as well as um, 
modifications that uh, just are not going to happen for them because the uh, predatory lending practices of Broadway Federal. In addition to that, uh, at present, we are extending and opening the door to individuals that might have um, residential loans as well as other commercial entities as well as the church, as besides the churches and besides uh, individual homeowners. Um, it's a systemic problem in our neighborhood, in our community, that uh, we're giving loans that the bank, Broadway Federal, knows that these people cannot pay back, the church can't pay it back, nor can the individual. So we set up a hotline, and that number is area code 213-351-9583, and uh, there's another number, area code 213-480-5900. Uh, if you're interested in obtaining some information that can be instrumental in helping you to save your property, save your church, save your community and your neighborhood, please give us a call. Um, while this is a, a big thing, it's not too big for, for God to take and, and work through you and through myself and Ms. Monago to rectify. Uh, it's our communities, it's our neighborhoods, uh, we need our churches. They provide invaluable services to us, whatever we're not getting at home, in the schools, or from the government, or from our own, um, our own efforts. Uh, we look to our churches for that, and it would just be a, a grave, grave, grave mistake for us to just um, back out or kowtow at this point in time because we, we have strength in numbers, and we can work together to rectify this uh, travesty that's occurring in our neighborhood. Our primary goal today is to let you know that we are here for the churches. We're here to assist them in researching and, and, and unraveling the allegations that's been made against the Broadway Bank and to do whatever is necessary to clear that situation up. Thank you. Thank you. One thing that becomes very, very clear in this situation is, is that the conduct of Broadway Federal Savings and Loan, I mean, excuse me, Broadway Federal Bank, um, is really is really extremely duplicitous in that they know full well that they are operating uh, in disregard to a cease and desist order and to a suspension. Yet they do not inform those that they are dealing with. They act as if they could or could not, meaning they have the ability to make a decision that could possibly have a, a positive effect. And then they, they lay out some tenets that they would like those individuals or those uh, organizations or churches to adhere to when they know full well that they cannot perform. With that, I'd like to close and say thank you. Oh, hold on. <laughs> we have to edit it. <laughs>